Santos, Talimola Mungala from the Securities and Exchange Commission. I want us to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Our topic for today is saving, invest, saving and investment schemes. And it says beware of scammers, especially during this festive period that we're about to get into. We would just like to encourage you to uh, beware of scammers and just also give you a few tips on how you can protect yourselves. Without further ado, we are going to have a very interesting um, discussion today. So I'd like to get straight into the presentation. Our presenter for today is Mrs. Dingase Mapumba, who's the manager market development here at the commission. Over to you, Dingase. All right, thank you so much, Stanley. And I would like to say thank you to everyone who has joined us. Um, I hope that uh, we make very good use of your time today. And uh, as we discuss a very important topic, uh, which can affect any one of us. Uh, I'll just get my slides moving, just a minute. Sorry, Stanley, can you see my slides moving? Mine are stuck from this end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, they are moving. Okay. If you can just go back to the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, we're going to be discussing a very important topic and I'm sure that it affects uh, everyone. And uh, I do hope that we're going to have a very interactive session uh, out of this this afternoon to really make good use of your time. And once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, so how are we spending our time today? Uh, this uh, one hour, but my presentation obviously will just be for hopefully just uh, under 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to always discuss about financial sector in Zambia because we don't assume that uh, everyone has been moving with us but we know that uh, some of you are already pro at understanding what we do. But for those who have just joined us today, we just go briefly to go through our mandate and how the financial sector is structured. We then go into a few notes over our saving and investing and also the government's perspective around it. Then we shall now delve into fraud, what it is and um, we hope that now we shall be getting into the heat of things, which is really what we are here to talk about. And I hope that we'll become uh, wiser after this discussion. We shall then talk about uh, the investment options in the capital markets, and we shall go to red flags uh, around uh, frauds and scam, which is really how to identify fraud and scams. We shall also then go through the financial sector joint messaging campaign, which will speak to the financial sector regulators and the initiatives around helping um, or helping investors not to be defrauded. Then we shall look at, um, I'll be joined my colleague, by my colleague, Thomas Stolle, who is going to speak to provisions of the law around fraud. So in a way, we are speaking to both those who are potential victims of fraud and also those who are perpetuators of fraud and what they might get themselves into if they are actually um, undertaking to defraud uh, the public. We shall then look at where to report the scams. So without any further ado, um, the structure of the Zambian uh, financial sector looks like this. There's the money markets, which is uh, overseen by the Bank of Zambia. I'm sure most of us know the Bank of Zambia. And uh, we have the capital markets, uh, where we're coming from, uh, which are overseen by the Securities and Exchange Commission, the ones who have brought you the town hall meeting today. And we have the Pensions and Insurance uh, Authority, which are looking at our pensions and also insurance sector. So this is what forms, or these are the three pillars of the financial sector in Zambia. 
talking to capital markets and uh, just to help us understand what they are. Um, first of all, as regulator of the capital markets in Zambia, the stake is established um, by an act of parliament, which simply means it's put in place by the government through an act of parliament, which is, uh, as we know, agreed by the members of parliament so that we can supervise and develop the capital markets in Zambia. And this is the Securities Act uh, Cap 354, which has been repealed. Uh, this was in 1994, but was repealed in 2016 and replaced by the Securities Act number 41. So to continue what we do in supervising and developing the markets in Zambia. Understanding the capital markets very quickly, uh, this is the, the, the market where uh, you have um, mobilization of funds by institutional investors, sorry, by uh, issuers um, through various means. They can do this uh, by issuing shares or even uh, issuing debt instruments, where for investors, uh, these are the investment instruments that are created. And so they'll be investing in these uh, issued uh, securities. Uh, for them to grow their money, and uh, that would be the interest of the investor. Uh, the investors come in two forms. They can be institutional investors, uh, which are the pension funds, and we have fund managers also who are managing collective investment schemes. They will pull funds from various um, uh, individuals or various investors, and uh, they will actually invest it on behalf of uh, individuals or the investors. And we can also have you and I as individual investors, and also those, some can be locally, local investors, and also foreign investors. The instruments that are used usually are equity, which is just shares, as we commonly understand them. When we see shares on the Lusaka Securities Exchange, uh, it means that those companies have actually uh, invited the public to buy shares in their businesses for purposes of uh, involving them in their business and also sharing the profits that they make. And uh, we do have uh, debt. Debt is uh, just um, um, like uh, borrowing from the public. And as an investor, I'm lending to this company for them to use my money. And as they do the business, they pay me uh, some sort of payment, which would commonly say an interest payment, and also uh, they'll pay me back the entire amount I have lent to them with interest. So the capital markets, um, the financial pool, in, uh, where long-term investments can be raised, and also long-term investments can be made. If you think of it from the investor's point of view and also from the issuer's point of view. Saving and investing. Uh, so there are basically two ways in which you can um, just move this away. There are basically two ways in which you can make money. You can work for the money and you can get paid for it. That is, you are in employment, or you can take your money and you save it or invest it. So what are savings? Savings is the money you put away usually in the safest places or products that allow you access at any time. And uh, that is why usually we find um, banking products or banking savings accounts, and these are very common. Um, we put our money there and it is very safe. Uh, in the capital markets, we do have unit trusts, which are investment products. However, they have features such as uh, relative liquidity. So we do consider them as savings products, if you like, and uh, you can access them quite easily, though not in the same way as you can access your savings through um, an ATM card or something with, uh, with uh, unit trust. If you want to redeem or you want to draw out your money, you give notice to, 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 your, in, to the fund manager and they give you, nowadays it's really quick. Sometimes it's just a day and you can draw your money. So it is relatively flexible and you can keep adding to your savings 
uh, or to your money or to your units uh, anytime. And so we do promote it or we do talk of it as if it's a savings uh, product as well. So savings can be used to cover various expenditures. Um, uh, you saw from uh, the way we have couched our topic today, we're saying um, during this uh, period, the spirit of spending can be quite irresistible. And also because of that, scammers will be quite alert and will use it to strike you at a time as this when you're most vulnerable. But of course, we shall talk a little more about that later. So investing involves putting your money to work. Uh, investing, uh, you can invest in debt instruments, which are bonds, as I said earlier. Mm, in our market, this is the, the most common product, it's the bonds, where you can save as a debt instrument. And in doing so, you are lending your money and it ends a steady pay. And uh, usually you get that paycheck every six months. Um, the borrower, which um, in our case, uh, usually we find it's uh, either the government or corporate as the issuers of bonds, uh, they'll pay you to use your money for a period of time. And it can be anything from um, uh, two years onwards. Um, at the moment, I think we have gone up to 20 years, nothing more than that. When you get your money back, you get it with interest. Uh, you can also invest in uh, shares, like mentioned earlier. And the, when you invest in shares, your benefit is that uh, you get a dividend, um, which usually is paid once every year. A dividend is a share of uh, profits by that company where you are holding your shares. Um, it can come, uh, or sometimes it is not declared due to various reasons, which you as shareholders will be made aware of and you agree to because when you're a shareholder, you actually own part of that company and you have a voice on uh, in what uh, decisions are made. Mm, and so as a shareholder, if you are attending your annual general meetings, you'll be asked sometimes to vote as to whether uh, the dividends, um, especially when the management of that company does declare that um, they would like to retain the profits, you will be asked to agree or not. So it's very important that actually when you're a shareholder, you attend those annual general meetings. The other way in which you can benefit when you're holding shares is uh, through capital gains. And uh, the capital gains as explained in the slide is really just the difference between the price at which an investor bought the shares and what the shares are worth today. So if uh, your share price has increased, um, looking at the example given, if you bought your share at 10 kwacha and um, it is worth 15 kwacha today, uh, when you calculate, you find that you have gained uh, your capital by a 50%. And the reverse will happen when the share price falls and uh, you get, you get um, a loss, what is called as a capital loss. And why? Um, do you need to invest? Uh, what is the government's perspective? Why do they even have uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission as an organization to look at ways in which they can help um, the public or the citizens of the country to actually undertake investments and uh, take, undertake them actually in a safe um, environment? Uh, they will put regulation uh, in place. And um, the bigger agenda is that they want everyone to be wealthy. So they will want to take charge in ensuring that um, people are knowledgeable, people do access these services. And uh, what happens in the end is that there's financial inclusion, which is uh, really adding to the wealth of the country as a whole. And uh, as we all know, Zambia aspires to be a middle income country. And um, when, the only way that this can happen is if the, the, the citizens themselves individually and as much as possible, everyone is brought along in uh, becoming financially included and financially wealthy. So this is the, um, the 
the NSFD goal is uh, dovetailing with the Vision 2030, which is making Zambia a prosperous middle income nation by 2030. So your investment options in the capital markets, I have explained them already. So this is just like a summary. And uh, you have the shares, the bonds, and the collective investment schemes. And we also have other innovative products that are coming through. And uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission is uh, embracing them. And this is uh, around crowdfunding. That, uh, around crowdfunding, we have peer-to-peer -peer lending. We have business to business, business to consumer, and so on. Those, all these um, new products that uh, the commission is actually uh, looking at and trying to embrace. Uh, we have actually developed specific regulations that are helping to embrace these new innovative products and ensuring also making sure that uh, they are safe for consumption by the public. Um, about this Christmas season, uh, why you must save? Of course, you need to save for your Christmas gifts. We, we encourage that you don't um, undertake uh, impromptu buying. Um, we want you to plan ahead also for New Year's obligations. And uh, you can do that by budgeting. We advise that you shop earlier. You don't go on shopping. Uh, when everyone else is rushing and uh, you yourself are rushing, of course, there's uh, something um, that can um, go wrong when you do that. And uh, usually uh, you have also other, other providers of services, not well-meaning, that can take advantage of you when you are in a rush. Uh, be aware that you can encounter fraud and the onus is on you to avoid it. And this is our topic for today. Um, scammers are just individuals like you and me, except they are doing business also. They are just fighting their own right. And they also know that school fees are just as uh, you are preparing for your annual, for your New Year's obligations, they're also doing so. So they'll be as crafty as they can be to ensure that they get their money. And uh, this is uh, through the different deceptive ways and you are actually their customer. You are the target. They get their money from individuals who have put some savings aside, who have earned their money legitimately, but do they care? No, of course they don't. They will just see you as, um, as their patriot, basically. So we are here now, it has, um, we have come to um, talking about fraud. Uh, we have a saying there, it says, a fool and his money are soon parted. Just to, to be in, at the back of our minds, when we part with our money in ways that are, for lack of a better word, foolish, then we are not, wise and I do hope that uh, after this discussion we're going to come out a little wiser than we came. So what is fraud? Uh, financial fraud is when an individual organization takes money or other assets from you through deception and or legal practices. You have been defrauded when you have been conned, deceived, cheated, you are scammed. You can think of many other words and I brought this in so that uh, we are not uh, over the using uh, jargon, we did receive some very valuable feedback in the last town hall meeting that we have to, to speak as a common language as it can come so that we are all moving uh, at the same level. So we're going to speak in, going to be talking about con, deception, cheating, being scammed, that is all fraud. Um, and we are very concerned about it as our financial regulators. So examples of uh, fraud can be Ponzi schemes. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about Ponzi schemes. Uh, can be online investment schemes, uh, phishing emails, can be through mobile phone scams. Uh, very, I was almost a victim of this on Sunday. Somebody called me and said uh, I had one, um, 12,500 quachan, they had also won a smartphone and things like that from Airtel. 
and I needed to do something, but they went on to also ask about how much I had and, oh, even if it felt so nice, I think um, I could tell that uh, that was very suspicious, but not many will be able to tell, unfortunately. Uh, fake investment schemes and fake product promotions can all be used as um, uh, to defraud individuals. Uh, so what are Ponzi schemes? Uh, Ponzi schemes, uh, the, the white Ponzi is named after a man called Charles Ponzi, uh, um, who actually created and crafted a scam way back in the 1920s. Uh, it is a form of fraud that lures investors and um, just a minute. It lures investors and pays profits to earlier investors with funds from more recent investors. So it is really not um, uh, genuine. It, uh, it, will it will purport to, to be an investment scheme um, as if they're investing in, it could be anything in products or other investments, but what they're really doing is using the funds from new investors to pay the older investors. And uh, eventually it gets saturated, uh, either there's fatigue or people start becoming suspicious. And when there's no fresh funds that are coming in, the pyramid scheme or the Ponzi scheme starts um, collapsing. You can, you have these slides and you can read um, the rest of what this slide is saying uh, in order to just um, uh, do more research and know about how the, the Charles Ponzi scheme went. Uh, so we do have um, uh, some uh, warning alerts and uh, explanations to these things. Um, earlier on, I did mention that financial sector regulators uh, are three in the country. Uh, we are on the three pillars of money markets, uh, capital markets, and also pensions and insurance. And together we, we do collaborate on certain initiatives. We are all looking after the public and their interests. And uh, in 2019, uh, around there, we collaborated to, to come up with what we call the financial sector joint messaging campaign. And it was all about consumer protection. So what we endeavored to do was to, to, to really make, sensitize and make aware to the public um, the various ways in which a fraud is happening in our country. And uh, we explained um, things like the pyramid schemes, uh, which I just explained uh, using the Ponzi schemes example. And so you see here on the, on the slide, that we do have a pyramid uh, uh, structure with the base having, uh, uh, being the startup, it, uh, it, it, it actually uh, thrives on uh, those who are starting to put in money and uh, they start inviting others um, to actually invest in the same. So it will call for more people. This is a time when you are asked to recruit others or sell it, sometimes it comes to products. You can uh, be given one pack, but you are told to sell to five other people, 10 other people. And as you are doing that, you're actually growing the pyramid. Um, and those people who are coming in are actually funding the, the newcomers who are at the top. And so what you realize is that there's actually no investment at all. It's just uh, funds coming from other, fund, other people's money who are joining the scheme. And so what we say, it is, it is a fraudulent um, scheme. So what's important on this one is that you need to learn to spot uh, a pyramid scheme or a Ponzi scheme and do not invest uh, in illegal money circulation schemes and you have to report these unlicensed financial service providers. And uh, we are going to, of course, discuss more of this as we go on. So fraudsters are counting on you. You become recruited to perpetrate a fraud. So they're counting on you not to ask questions, 
the accounting will need to be naive, to be gullible, to be trusting, and really easy to be fooled. Okay. Um, and if you are that, then it becomes very easy for them to pounce on you with their maneuvers, with their tricks. Um, they dangle you with carrots. They dangle you with making more money easily. Uh, there are so many ways that actually you will get to learn as we go on that uh, you can say, identify for yourself that this doesn't mean well. So be alert and smart, protect yourself. Um, other ways that you, we talked about uh, examples are uh, online investments. And uh, here we can uh, pick out virtual currencies. Uh, virtual currencies such as the Bitcoin have recently become popular and are intended to serve as a type of money. Um, they can be traded on online exchanges for conventional currencies or used to buy goods or services, usually online. Now, the rising use of virtual currencies in the global marketplace may entice fraudsters to lure investors into bonds and schemes. And um, we, we can for sure say that uh, this has happened in many ways. We've seen a lot of um, uh, cryptocurrency um, different ones come about and some have already crashed. And a lot of people have lost millions, millions and millions of money uh, in those schemes. So the, the, the reason why transactions in virtual currencies are uh, easier to be in, in this uh, category of, uh, of uh, scams is that uh, they are supposedly uh, have great privacy benefits and have less regulatory oversight than transactions in conventional currencies. And this makes them more predisposed to fraudsters. And um, fraudsters really are difficult to find. Those who are in, um, in um, uh, online uh, uh, crime practices, uh, cryptocurrencies. I, I did, uh, I think uh, when I was watching BBC recently, there was a missing crypto queen uh, who they've been trying to find for a very long time. And uh, I think it's only now that they're trying to, to use some very sophisticated technology to, to look at a picture that uh, uh, one of her, uh, her people took and to find, to try and trace her whereabouts. So it's very difficult to trace um, the whereabouts of uh, those who are undertaking online who are on online platforms. They can sit anywhere and uh, not be traced. Their offices cannot be traced. And so even regulators find it very difficult. And that is why um, we try to warn uh, investors that when you are dealing in um, virtual currencies, uh, you are literally on your own. And especially in Zambia, we have not yet come to a stage where we are regulating these. So we always caution that uh, deal with cryptocurrencies or virtual currencies with caution. Uh, just an example of um, uh, a, a scam that has happened in Zambia. There was no pay and it went like this. There was uh, an organizer advertised an investment opportunity in an online forum, which deals in precious stones headquartered in Bulgaria. Investors were allegedly promised up to 30 to 40% interest per month depending on the type of uh, invested amount and the tenure that they took. The scheme advised that investors will be paid their returns using Bitcoin and could check their account balances online. Investment swaps were also encouraged online. Apparently, there is no mining activity anywhere in the world under minimum pay. After the seizure notice on their operations, the website was deactivated and uh, there are no physical records at all to verify who invested, nor the amounts that were collected. So this is uh, quite discomforting. I'm sure um, you could imagine the promise was very lucrative and yet these cannot even be traced. So we now go on to look at the red flags. How then can you identify that um, um, the product uh, is written that, that you have been offered or that you are considering to invest in is written with the uh, scam or is actually fraudulent. What are the red flags? And this is what we're just coming to. 
So when you see high investment returns with little or no risk, you have to be very cautious because every investment carries some degree of risk. And investments yielding high returns typically involve more risk. Um, this is one of the very uh, 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 red light or a red flag that uh, must ensure that you trade very carefully uh, and be cautious about investing in such products. Uh, overly consistent returns are also of concern. Uh, investments tend to go up and down over time, especially those seeking high returns. So you be very suspicious of investments that uh, generate consistent returns regardless of overall market conditions. This is obvious uh, in the market environment, uh, the economy or the economic conditions don't stay in one place, they tend to rise and fall. This is where we hear that today's rate is at uh, this amount, uh, the quacha has strengthened, which has weakened, or we do hear about um, uh, fluctuating inflationary rates, all those affect um, the investments during that period in, in, in that economy where it is actually operating. So when you see um, an investment promising very consistent returns, it must be very worrying or you must take it with a pinch of salt because it's literally not possible to have consistent returns unless it is really backed by uh, some very strong um, assets. Um, and there's really a way that uh, they are actually devising those consistent retains. Uh, otherwise, you must ask why it is like that. And um, maybe that is just to do why you into investing. Other red flags, uh, we continue secretive or complex strategies and fee structures. It's a good rule of thumb to avoid investments you don't understand or for which you cannot get complete information. Um, remember, uh, I said earlier that um, fraudsters are counting on you not to ask and they are counting on you to really be gullible, to really not um, do a lot of questioning um, around uh, the investment. Like for example, I'll, I'll give an example of um, um, Maybe you want to buy a, a house, for example, and um, what they normally do when you want to buy a house, they'll show you a complete house. Uh, they'll show you a house that is already decked up with um, all the decor, all the furnishings. There's really nice lighting in them. They even create uh, 3D, uh, you know, with something that really makes you feel good and um, little will they reveal that they will not be selling you a house with all those finishings. What they actually will be selling is just a, a basic, a, really a shell of a house. And if you don't ask, you go on thinking that um, your investment or I don't know whether it would be 600,000 is actually that kind of a house. And They'll, they'll start revealing to you later on when you're already captured. And um, that is very depressing and um, almost fraud in, in a, a big sense that you were deceived in what you are undertaking to buy. Issues with paperwork, be very skeptical of excuses regarding why you can't review information about the investment in writing, always read and carefully consider an investment's prospect um, and disclosure state prospectus and uh, disclosure statement before investing. If you're trying to get your contract and it's never coming, um, be very careful about it. Uh, be very cautious and uh, you might want to reconsider your decision. Difficult receiving payments, these are, um, we talked about bonds earlier and uh, bonds come with um, uh, definite pay plans. For example, they'll let you know that on such a date, you receive your interest or you receive your coupon or even other products, uh, I imagine they're out there, they're fixed deposits and uh, various other products are, are around. But if that date comes and you can't receive your payment, this is consistent and maybe they are asking you to roll back your funds 
at uh, promising you even higher investment returns, just be very, very suspicious. You might want to insist in coming out of that investment. Insist on coming out. Um, back to the financial sector joint messaging campaign, which I introduced earlier. And the reason why really uh, belabored to mention that we are structured as um, we are three financial regulators in the financial sector is that we have common ground and uh, this is um, a common ground and common mandate to protect uh, investors or to protect the public in the financial sector. Uh, those the public who are trying to make, uh, to earn a living, to save some money, grow their money, and uh, basically be financially included and become financially well off. So we did come up with uh, uh, an initiative which we called the Financial Sector Joint Messaging Campaign. Uh, this was uh, basically to create awareness and um, awareness around fraud, which has been on the increase, and also to ensure that we are protecting the consumers by involving them in uh, self-help. Okay, so the background of it uh, was that um, incidences of fraud have been on the increase worldwide, not only in Zambia, but Zambia as well, uh, inclusive on that um, arrangement. And for that matter, dig digital platforms um, have massively contributed towards an increase in financial inclusion, but also in um, um, opening up the markets to fraud, which is coming through digital channels or through the internet, uh, so to say. And um, we, we are sad about it because um, when you are trying to invest, you're trying to actually look for financial gain to satisfy your different financial needs, to do all those things that we encourage you to do. Um, but sometimes uh, you incorporate you incorporate to fraud. And um, sometimes, like uh, I mentioned, fraudsters are, are tricksters, they are, they are criminals who don't care where they, they get their money from. They can even afford to get a retiree's entire retirement fund. And um, that won't matter to them. So it is very concerning to the regulators and we had to come up with a campaign just to help those who are in the front line, the ones that are being targeted to be able to identify fraud. Uh, uh, other than that, um, uh, you find that if uh, fraud perpetuates, if this market is seen as one we, where there's is rife uh, fraudulent activities going on, of course, it has a marrying effect and individuals will lose trust and confidence in the financial sector. So we're trying to help put a stop to fraud. And um, like I said, um, the best way is to create sensitization and awareness towards fraud. And um, only because most of the time, tricksters know that they can't give you enough time to, to start has to go on and ask. So they will come up with, or they'll craft their strategies in such a way that before you know it, or at the first uh, contact with you, you're already deciding to invest with them. Or they, they will try as much trickery as possible to get your money as quickly as they can from you. So by the time you even have um, recourse to, or you try to, to to get in touch with the regulator, it might be in a product such as the, the cryptocurrency where there's no regulation or where, and or it just takes so long to find these uh, tricksters because they know that uh, they are criminals and they'll be on the run. Sometimes they'll even relocate depending on how much they, they've gotten out of view. They will go and uh, have their holidays. So the best way to curb uh, fraud is by yourself, the onus is on you. I've spoken to this to create that awareness 
and uh, to instill, instill that sense of responsibility in the public, in the consumers, in the investors, towards uptake of financial products by advising steps to undertake before signing up for investments. Mm. Okay, that is um, the same thing. And so how did we do it or how are we doing it? What are the initiatives? Um, we do have uh, actually a message that came through from the chief executive officer, uh, Mr. Philip Chitalu. I'll ask um, uh, Sichuan to play it, but maybe let me just go through this content and we can have it at the end. Um, we're saying be aware of unsolicited emails, phone calls, etc. These are happening. I gave an example of myself. Only on Sunday, I received a phone call that I had won a smartphone and a 12,000 tariff departure from Airtel and there are things I needed to do like check my balance and so on. But of course, I was um, aware that this is fraud. But if you do that, you are actually getting your exposure. They have their own ways that they will then get access to your account and get your money out. So do safeguard your money. This is just an example of uh, this boy, uh, this uh, gentleman who had been called in a similar manner as I was called. It is so real that he had won something. And um, he went on to do exactly what uh, they told, asked him to do. He fell prey to this kind of scam. So what are the tips? Safeguard your money. Be aware of a request from a known and known uh, mobile and telephone numbers, SMSs, emails, or WhatsApp messages to so send money to a different bank account and e-wallet or mobile money. Be aware of uh, fraudulent tactics to steal your money, such as unexpected phone calls or messages about prize money or competitions that you never even uh, participated in, a fake promise to send you money or a loan you did not apply for, if you provide your personal details, such as your PIN, PIN number, your NRC number, bank account number, e-wallet number, uh, unauthorized request for fake address to help someone. All of these, uh, you have to be aware that uh, they are the ways in which uh, people are being defrauded. There's also fake deals. And usually they, they target uh, our older folk. They will come with um, maybe fake stones. This is an example of um, somebody selling, they're selling emeralds and you, we've seen them come to our mobile phones and times in at what time away and so on, such things. And um, uh, you might just uh, be at a point when you're vulnerable, you want to make a bit, a bit of money and you think, let me invest. And so I double my money and so on. And so be, be aware, safeguard your money, select investment products that you understand. If you don't know how to, to tell that this is just a colored stone and it's not uh, precious, why would you go on and um, invest in it? So select products that you understand. And do research on an investment before you commit yourself. Always avoid and be suspicious of investments that promise a high interest or profit. And most important, use a financial service provider that is licensed and regulated by either the Bank of Zambia, the Securities and Exchange Commission, or the Pensions and Insurance Authority to get expert advice on investments for your money. So you must always ask, are you licensed and can I see your license? Don't end there. Licenses, uh, if on paper can be faked or forged, you have to then consult with the actual, actual license, licensor of that or the actual uh, institution which has uh, granted that license so that you can check with us if it's valid and um, uh, take your time for you go ahead, basically. Uh, beware of get rich quick scheme. So um, just to take you back again, when we were coming up with this campaign, we, we did not just, um, we sat back, we consulted, we did some research and looked at the most common ways in which uh, fraud is happening in our country. 
And these are the ones, and I do know that uh, most of you are identifying with them. And that is why I've endeavored to go through this campaign because it uh, must be speaking right to the spot. So it must be right on spot. And uh, what you must do about such things. So we do have here again, uh, this is, it's an example of a get rich quick scheme where you're promised uh, to double your money. Imagine um, you save, you're asked to save uh, 5,000 kwacha, and in three to nine months, you get 49,000 kwacha. You must really ask, in what asset have they invested my money so that I can get to reach this fast? So again, the tips, if you've got your money, select investment products that you understand. Beware of fraudulent tactics used in emails, telephone calls, WhatsApp messages. Um, beware of a fake promise to double your money a fake promise of high interest rates, those that are beyond 30, 50 to 100% in a short time are really questionable. Uh, be suspicious of sales tactics to deposit and invest your money in investment schemes or investment groups which are not regulated. Again, the reason is that you have no recourse to the law or to the regulator to help you um, retrieve or even recover some of the losses of, uh, that you have incurred. Um, always avoid to be sus to and always avoid and be suspicious of investments that depend on the recruitment of other members to bring in money. That exercise where you become the salesperson, uh, always be wary, always be suspicious of why most likely. That is a pyramid scheme. Those are the features of pyramid schemes and they are illegal. Um, we also have um, a mention, uh, uh, alert on insurance products. Do not complete or sign any document if you're not ready to buy an insurance policy. Usually insurance products are very, very tricky and can be used very easily by fraudsters because they are they tend to be quite complicated and um, they promise a lot. And uh, at the time when you want to actually do claims, you find that um, the providers are neither here nor there. So demand uh, for key fact statements from your insurer when you are buying motor, householders, house owners, funeral or life insurance cover. Yeah. And if you're already insured, insured, do not make a false claim accident death it is in all your rights and obligations as a policy holder that's the message um, coming from the insurance sector uh, we discussed pyramid schemes and um, we have also a very common um, uh, investment scheme in our country today and these are the network marketing usually network marketing their products uh, it's a form of multi-level marketing where a company recruits individuals to buy an inventory of stock for a particular product. And then they sell them to the public by word or mouth or direct sales. You may earn a commission income from selling the product and recruiting other people below you to also sell the product. However, network marketing products are not, are not uh, financial services or investments. That is what we want you to know. They are not financial services or investments. Investing involves using your money to buy financial assets such as shares, unit trusts, mutual funds, treasury bills, bonds, or placing your money in a fixed term deposit or savings accounts to increase its future value. You earn interest or a financial gain on your investments. Only licensed and regulated financial service providers are authorized to provide investments to the public. That is um, you, and that is someone who's stuck with the, their products after they got thinking that they have invested. If you are not good at uh, marketing or even selling, then you find yourself stuck, your money stuck in the products. They are not an investment. Investing is what we have just described. We, to end my presentation, um, this must be my last one. Haha, -ha. 
mwacho wansa cho apo kuina na kunungira rich rich anga richard in the world narabura fe pension yonse ero no mbanka yeno mbana kufam nkaero kweshe ngombe shonse ero no mbamtware kwe sempia i am going to invest in a group investment so that I'll be getting 100% profit per week in the world in Bobondo Don Jojo. When I give them a 500, they will return a 1,000. Wahahaha. Mamba ni kwe soko kwe ni mkachita investi, yo. But you want to mine SMS in the world in Bobo, in Jojo. Tamwa itambe wino wa Zambia. Mkalu senda na mawa poncho mkawweke la mkuchura. Have you taken time to investigate the people behind those messages? Limbi mas kamaz. Iweka sacho, I'm a rich man. I speak money. Ni investment in the panga mwa iche iwe. I'm not donating money. It's not a fafa veve. Let's try invest money. Mona, it's not a joke. Ba poncho mrete kanya. Always make sure you deal with licensed financial service providers. Take time to ask around if the messages are coming from the legitimate financial service provider. So your message nga mwa ilole kesha mwala sanga fati ni namba ya muntu fya lefu afe muntu mine ndarama michitena swindu wali empia. Lole shea ni po festi mwone. Ah, so barifu kunkuruka. Always follow the do's and the don'ts of a smart investor. Be a smart investor to live better. This message is brought to you from the Financial Sector Joint Messaging Communications, a partnership of Bank of Zambia, Pensions and Insurance Authority, and Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay, um, that was just a summary um, in a dramatic way. I do hope that um, got uh, to be enlightened out of my... Um, presentation. I know it took a bit long, but I know that it was necessary because these things are touching on our financial welfare. I do have my colleague coming through to now talk to areas which are provis provided for by the law. Um, and I do know that uh, some people who are scammers might even be with us, but uh, it's important that you know what would be coming your way. So we do have, I hand back the mic to you, Stali, so that you can um, introduce um, the next speaker. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Dingase, for that elaborate presentation. Um, so Thomas is supposed to take us through the second part of the presentation. Thomas is from the Directorate of Enforcement and Legal Services here at the Commission. Uh, we have run out of time. So Thomas, I'll only give you five minutes so that we can allow our audience to engage with us and answer their pertinent questions. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'll just take you through uh, some of the provisions uh, in the financial markets that are breached by fraudsters and scammers who engage uh, illegal and improper uh, practices. So on the first slide, one of the commonest provisions that is breached is uh, section 60 of the Bank and Financial Services Act, that is number 7 of 2017. How is this provision breached? You realize that uh, most of the fraud, scam, scam, fraud scammers and individuals who collect uh, money from the public in form of deposits actually are not licensed as uh, banks or financial institutions. And as such, by so doing, they contravene the provisions of the Banking and Financial Services Act because uh, this provision requires that for any person to, prov to provide any banking or financial business, they must have a license duly issued from the Bank of Zambia. Then the other provision that is breached is uh, Section 157.2 of the Banking and Financial Services Act. Uh, how is this provision breached? This is usually breached by people who engage in money circulation schemes, which we also refer to as uh, pyramid schemes or bond schemes. Uh, Dingase did uh, try to explain what a bond scheme, a money circulation scheme is. Then we're going to talk about uh, the provisions of the Securities Act, uh, number 41 of 2016. Uh, 
that also talk about aspects to do with uh, fraud, which might occur in the uh, securities sector or capital markets. So we'll talk about uh, section 20. Before I talk about this provision, I just want to explain that uh, one of the regulatory mandates of the Securities and Exchange Commission is uh, to promote the operation of an orderly growth and development of the capital markets. And as such, uh, amongst our regulatory mandates, uh, we do license, recognize, authorize, and authorize the activities of capital market operators. And one of the activities that we do, we authorize uh, entities to operate as uh, securities exchanges. I want to believe we, know, we all know about the Rusaka Securities Exchange. That is one of the entities that is actually licensed by the Securities and Exchange Commission. To this end, if anyone is going to operate or maintain a securities exchange that is not licensed by the Commission, that is an obligation of the law, which is section 20. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. So among us, uh, the regulatory mandates of the commission is also to license persons who are going to conduct a securities business in the market. Among us, uh, the people that we license are uh, dealers. And uh, it is an offense for any person to deal in securities when they're not licensed by the commission. And as such, that is a co-translation of section 32 of the Securities Act. Then we also make sure that the people participate in the security space by providing investment advice. Their people are competent to do so. And how do people acquire this competence? Usually these people undertake a SEC approved course. So if you go to CPIC, there's a stockbroker's course. That is a course that uh, someone needs to undertake and pass for them to be considered to be fit and proper to offer investment advice. The other course that one can do is the CIS course or another equivalent uh, SEC approved uh, course. Then uh, among us, uh, the investment uh, vehicles under the Securities League and the Regulatory Framework is a collective investment scheme. If a person is going to operate any scheme as a collective investment scheme that is not authorized by the commission, that is an offense under section 122 of the act. So again, if you go back to our provisions, like I said, one of the regulatory mandates of the commission is to authorize collective investment schemes. So if you're going to come up with any scheme which has features of a collective investment scheme, but it is not duly licensed by the commission, that becomes an offense. So this provision prohibits you from uh, promoting or encouraging or encouraging or encouraging any person to become a participant in SAIS, which is not authorized by the commission. Okay. Then with respect to fraud, it is also an offense under section 197 of the Securities Act for any person to engage in any scheme, device, or practice to defraud another person. How does this occur? If you are going to promote any product which you know is not licensed by the commission, but you mislead another person to believe that actually it is licensed, that becomes fraud. Or you might have a license, but that, that license probably has been revoked or canceled or suspended by the commission. But you all, you go on to conduct securities business. You would have defrauded another person in connection with a securities transaction. And if you do so, that becomes an offense. Or if you use a SEC jury issued license to sell or promote a product that you're not licensed to promote under that license, that is fraud and it's an offense under Section 197 of the Act. That section 199 also speaks to aspects of fraud in the security space. Next slide, please. Yeah, so whenever we come across uh, issues of fraud, uh, as the Securities Exchange Commission, the Bank of Zambia, and the PIA, you realize that uh, all these three financial regulators do not have jurisdiction to do with uh, criminal fraudulent practices. 
So we do refer such matters to the, to the relevant law enforcement agencies like the Zambia Police, the DEC, and the like, who have got criminal jurisdiction to prosecute perpetrators of such uh, offenses. And we have entered into memorandum of understandings for collaboration, cooperation, and sharing of information with uh, the law enforcement uh, agencies. So as uh, Madam Dingase has said, uh, my way of course is be wary and avoid investing your high spend resources in unregulated uh, financial products, because if you do so, you do so at your own risk or peril. And in the event of uh, fraud or theft, you, might not have, you may not have a regulatory recourse. Thank you, be a smart investor. Okay, thank you so much, Thomas, for that. So as we've heard for ourselves, we know we've gotten the tips from Dingase. So if something is too good to be true, it probably is, as our CEO would always say. So please, please be cautious on how you invest. At the end of the day, the onus is on you. Like it's really up to you as, as an individual to protect yourself from being scammed and from just allowing yourself to be um, scammed by people. You need to do your research, ask the right questions, and simply protect yourself. So we'll now open up for our questions. I know we have taken a bit of time, but we'll allow for some questions from our audience. You can type your questions in the chat, and our presenters will be able to respond to them. Our Facebook audience, you can also engage us there. We'll be able to respond. From my end, I don't see any questions. Uh, Stanley, yeah, I, I have I have some questions. Okay. I have seen some questions in the chat. Mm. Okay, and oh. let, let me just help. Okay. Uh, there's a question from uh, Dr. Lukonga, who says, does the campaign have a call center loan where people can call and verify when a potential investment scam has come one's way? And uh, I'll respond to that um, in note yet. Uh, we are actually running a phase uh, three, I think, of the campaign. And this is what we want to focus on in uh, on um, coming up with uh, a hotline where people can actually be reporting their scams. So not yet, but we are moving into that um, direction. Then we also have another question. What can you say about this new money grow? Um, I'm not sure if my there's a, any colleague around who can answer to that. Anyone from SEC, money grow. Thomas, I'm not sure if you are able to, you know that one? Okay, uh, probably I would request uh, the person who has asked this question. Uh, if you are maybe within town, are you able to take time probably just to visit the commission so that probably we can learn more from you about what is actually happening around this entity. We want to learn more from you. Uh, uh, the activities or the products that, that this uh, same money group is uh, promoting or providing, how it is being done. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Of course, um, like, like we mentioned earlier, uh, these uh, product services are being offered to the public and um, the public being alert is very important to us. And um, once you're suspicious, you bring it to light to our attention so that you, in a, in a way you're helping yourself in checking on what it is and also helping us as regulators to, to know that there's something like this going on because it can, um, fraud can be evasive to regulators sometimes, mm, but when the public work together with the regulator, it really helps. Uh, so we would uh, love to know more about this money grow. Um, we have another question. It says most of the scams we have, 
we have around happen via virtual space, especially through telephone, uh, WhatsApp, BTC. Is there a joint coordination or at what point does SEC involve Zikta to bring such scams to an end? Okay, I, I, um, I am aware that um, the Bank of Zambia and Zikta are working together on this. Um, and the SEC also can um, report or does work together with the uh, these other law or other regulators. Uh, we have seen there's even CCPC and uh, Zikta themselves are very, very active uh, in trying to curb um, fraud that is coming through through the the their space, the phones and so on. And um, in fact, I, I saw today a message that said if you have been you are being invited to to invest in some things, do report that number so that they can actually, um, they can literally close it off to, to, to send more messages to others. So uh, um, there is a lot of room of uh, collaboration and uh, yes, we do collaborate in most of these things. Unless uh, there's something more that um, my colleague would like to add. And I'll just uh, I want to add on that uh, regardless uh, of the medium in which uh, the financial product is uh, being uh, promoted or sold, as a smart investor, always take time and consider it important to ask if the person or entity providing the product or soliciting for money from you has a requisite license to do that. If you're not sure, uh, as financial regulators, we always maintain an open door policy. You can visit the commission, you can go to Bank of Zambia, you can visit PIA to just verify uh, whether the person or entity is licensed before you give them your hard earned uh, money. Okay. Uh, there's another question, uh, just to assure um, uh, Mr. Simonza, uh, maybe Miss Simonza, that yes, we shall provide the presentations. We shall be sending them through just after this um, uh, meeting ends. And there's another question says, uh, maybe I'm a, a little wrong, but it appears as though there's a little silence when it comes to the prosecution or judgment, when it comes to the scams cases in the court of law. Do you, that is sick, think that um, you might also contribute to the increase in these scams? I, I guess by going silent. Uh, mm. Over to you, Thomas, you can attend to that one. Okay, no, I, I'm just trying to appreciate uh, the context in which uh, the person has asked this question is saying that there's a bit of silence. Well, I think uh, in the recent past, actually, with respect to the cases uh, that uh, financial regulators have dealt with, which relates to fraud and scams. I would give an example of uh, the mineral pay that my colleague Dinga said did allude to. I would also give an example of uh, the heritage coin, even including the ENMO and other cases that uh, were prosecuted and uh, information is the public domain. I think that information is, is available and I know We've been issuing like uh, public uh, warnings, notices, and the like. Even when like uh, cases are concluded, at times information has been coming out about uh, what happened. Just trying to warn the, the public about uh, the dangers of giving money to these fraudsters before conducting the necessary due diligence on their part. I think where we can, we've tried to make sure that uh, most of this information is. Uh, Publicized. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you, Thomas. Uh, there's somebody saying thank you for the presentation. Very informative. Uh, you're welcome, and we are glad that you came. Uh, how does one go about registering as a financial advisor? What are the steps? Uh, in the best interest of time, I would like to refer Taonga to our website, www.sexzambia. 
www.ofsa.org.zn where you will find uh, under licensing, um, you will find the forms and uh, they will take you through all the requirements that you need to fill uh, in order to apply. Should you have any, any uh, hurdles, don't hesitate to call us. Uh, you'll have somebody to speak to who is manning that desk. Uh, we also have a, another question. What's your take on Kamono Investment Initiative? What is your take on Kamono Investment Initiative? Um, again, when you go to the website, you will find um, some notices um, which are basically alluding to the fact, the position that um, the stake has on uh, the certain investments that are coming through. Uh, and it is basically saying we, we are not adverse to innovations. However, as an investor, you need to know for yourself, decipher what is um, good or bad for you. Uh, to know what whether this product looks like it's genuine or not. Uh, these things are being um, uh, looked at uh, in from another angle or from a different perspective, but we want, that is why we even bring these programs. We want um, uh, you as investors to have certain, uh, to be empowered to understand how an investment should uh, be so that it answers to your investment objectives and the risks that might be embedded in, in uh, investments as they come. So if you see some of the features that we have talked about are appearing in any such investments that are around, then uh, for us, we are advising that you, you take your precautions. However, if you are comfortable and you go ahead, just know that um, certain investments, and if you have asked whether they are licensed and you find that they are not, just know that uh, at, for the moment you'll be on your own because there'll be no recourse to, to, to the law for you. The regulator will not stand in for you and uh, try and help you. It will be quite difficult because they are not under the ambit of the regulator. So we, I do, uh, I would like to encourage that um, you read through those two notices. I think we have two on uh, contract farming because you're not the only one who has asked. So we had to put out something uh, and um, put a position on where we, or how a position that the commission is taking on those kind of investments. Uh, for now, that is our position. I hope that helps. Then we do have another question, investor protection. How does the SEC effectively protect investors in the market when there are issuers who have not been published in financial statements for a prolonged period? Sadly, not even a cautionary statement has been issued by the issuer. Um, then we have another question on village banking. It says, what's the position of the regulatory bodies on village banking schemes or clubs? Okay. Uh, is there anyone who can uh, answer to those? Okay, maybe I can uh, chip in Dingase. Thank you. Uh, and also maybe just to add on to what you submitted in terms of uh, the earlier questions around uh, contract farming. So mm -hmm. I think it's important um, that uh, the commission also clarifies its mandate to the public. Um, so the Securities Act um, mandates the SEC to regulate certain products. So it's not like everything that's an investment is uh, falls under the commission's jurisdiction. No. 
So if you look at the Securities Act, it uh, speaks of uh, specific instruments, financial instruments or financial products that uh, fall within our supervisory ambit. And so the traditional uh, products like your shares, your bonds, if they are being traded in the secondary market, things like uh, collective investment schemes are specifically mentioned, um, derivatives, all those things fall under our supervisory ambit. So um, it's important for the public to know that there are many other investments that will not fall under financial securities. And uh, some of these investments uh, will fall in the category of, say, commodities, for example. So I'll give an example. Uh, somebody can, can lure you uh, to, or can, 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 can approach you. Let's not assume that every investment is uh, ill, Ill concept. Somebody can approach you to say, you know, I'm, I'm actually looking for a partner to invest in building uh, a boarding house in Kalingalinga, for example, that would not fall um, within the, 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 the space that we regulate. As I've mentioned, we have very specific uh, things that we oversee as stipulated in, in the law. What becomes a concern um, is where there is the act of providing investment advisory services to the public. So in addition to these specific financial securities that we are required to, to supervise and uh, regulate, we are also given a mandate to ensure that investment advisory services are only offered by qualified people who have licenses. Now that's where most people get captured. So if we find you, you're going to the public, and you're providing investment advice where you're telling somebody that they must ad, uh, invest in this because it's lucrative and you're going on to give all manner of advice around that. Yes, there then we have an interest. It's a very thin line. Um, and uh, people, are, some, some scrupulous people are actually aware of that distinction and they will make sure that um, their materials, you know, their marketing material is done in such a way that they don't fall within the coverage of the Securities Act. So with that said, with that said, it's all the more the reason why we are emphasizing, especially given what digital uh, means and access has done with all these new products of fintechs uh, and, and, and you know, uh, other electronic um, uh, uh, or digital products, with that, we are emphasizing that going forward, really, it has to be that you, the investor, you are providing the first line of defense to your own investments. And hence the tips that were shared, ably shared by Dingase, and uh, also the uh, notices that D D Dingase has referred to, uh, where we, from time to time, will issue a notice and like she has said on contract farming, we've had to issue a specific notice to warn the public that this does not fall within the supervisory ambit of the commission. So if you accept to get into a contract farming with somebody, the expectation is you have evaluated what uh, is being offered and you have considered that this product is suitable for your investment objectives or goals. And if something goes wrong, you cannot find recourse uh, from, from the commission or indeed uh, from the financial sector regulators. Can I quickly now move on to um, the question on village banking? So village banking, the financial sector regulators took um, a, 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 an agreed position that we allow village banking because the concepts of village banking first and foremost are not intended for you to go out to the public to, uh, uh, to solicit for public, uh, just anybody to join your village, village bank. No, village banking's uh, um, ethos and uh, models that you are getting into this investment scheme with people that you know, friends, family from the village. Um, so with that, 
what we agreed is that um, we want to inculcate a savings culture in this country that is based on trust. So we have agreed that we will not regulate village banking and allow it to give practical lessons uh, in terms of the disciplines that ordinarily foster development of um, markets in the sense that people then learn the value of savings, they learn the need for contracting, they, need, they learn the need for record keeping. So all those good ethos is what we wanted inculcated in the Zambian culture. And those of you that have, uh, um, have been in this market for a while, you can honestly confirm that village banking over the years has introduced certain positives in that you can now see that people are beginning to ask the right questions before they, they can consider a village bank where they're introduced by somebody, even somebody they know. They're asking, is this village bank secure? Where do they put the money? Are they using some of these options that have been given by the banks? Uh, is there a contract in place that states what happens if one member uh, defaults? So you see, already we're beginning to be very smart um, as a country, as a people. And that's what we want to see because it's once you have been burnt before or once you have learned these practical lessons, uh, you, 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 you are then able to actually uh, appreciate uh, other forms of partnerships and uh, uh, other forms of investment. So I hope that clarifies that um, the village banking is, is a strategic uh, product that we have embraced as financial sector regulators, but we are also cognizant that already there is a <laughs> outcries um, in, in certain uh, village banks where there has been you know, people losing money, but those are important lessons for, for, for the market to graduate to, to its next level which is a level that has uh, more predominantly smart uh, investors um, so that you know, we, we, we are able to participate in bigger things within the global investing, investment market. Thank you very much uh, uh, for that uh, very, very elaborate. And um, I was taking notes. I, I, I I really appreciate your response, and I do hope that our, our participant, um, um, Mr. Balo Erika, has also appreciated uh, where we stand as regulators. There is another question. Uh, we have investor protection. The question goes on to say, what actions does SEC take on issuers who issue cautionary statements that arose out of misuse of public funds, and put investors at risk. Uh, he cites the case of Madison Financial Services who have been issuing cautionary statements that the directors are still looking for assets to liquidate in order to pay back investors who made investors investments rather, but seem to have lost their investments because of poor investment decisions by the company. Yeah, that's um, quite a logical question. I hope you you got it. Um, Tingasa, were you wanting that when you say you uh, you hope somebody got it? Were you wanting me to speak to that? Please, yes. So uh, I think the beginning of that is asking in terms of what the commission does for um, <laughs> what they have uh, called um, uh, announcements by. I think they've gone on to uh, um, uh, make conclusions, you know, about uh, the particular named uh, entity. So there are um, a number of tools that we use in terms of regulating the market and a number of uh, uh, instruments that we apply. So unfortunately, in the case at hand, I am not able to... Um, comment uh, any further on uh, public forum uh, with respect to the issues that have been raised and uh, uh, leveled um, in that comment by the contributor. But just to reassure the market that um, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the aspect of uh, regulation can be very complex. 
And yes, it is true that you get a diverse uh, number of uh, market players. And at the same time, you do fall into various uh, regulatory uh, situation or circumstances. And um, there are a lot of factors that uh, a regulator um, takes into consideration in dealing with uh, the various uh, matters, regulatory matters that come at hand. And some of those issues, uh, just maybe to demystify or just maybe to be put clar clarity, um, the commission has um, uh, two um, and several options in terms of how to deal with uh, uh, issues of non-compliance uh, on the part of a market player. So we can uh, penalize that market player and take what we call administrative uh, sanctions. We can also, depending on um, how we've assessed the situation, we can decide to move into the institution um, and do what we call a possession. And the aim of uh, that uh, particular act is to really uh, get close to the issues within that institution and to try and offer solutions for investors who are affected um, by an eventuality or just the way the institution has been managed. Then also you do have um, other processes we do. For example, if we are suspecting issues to do with criminalities, then that takes a different uh, process which uh, goes beyond ourselves. I mean, the, the, the law enforcement agents also get into the picture. We may also opt sometimes to work with um, private sector resources in, in, in terms of uh, forensic experts. But just to uh, um, assure you that um, we are cognizant of the pain points that the investors uh, uh, have faced. And most of those pain points are communicated through complaints and various platforms such as this. And be rest assured that uh, we're looking into these issues, not just as ourselves, but uh, for some of the matters, we literally actually uh, pull resources together with uh, sister regulators like the Central Bank and the Pensions and Insurance Authority. And um, please, please, uh, please note that um, the, the, the issues um, that uh, you, know, you raise as grievance points are very, very, um, um, well um, noted, and the the aspiration is that uh, you know as we resolve these issues, we are also putting in place better uh, supervisory frameworks that will ensure that uh, you know we avoid uh, similar or related uh, pain points from investors. It is a process. Uh, the developed countries where you see uh, regulation being on top of its game. Um, um, have had to equally go through this process that we're going through. And uh, from, where we, from where we stand, we, we are very confident that um, we are beginning to reduce uh, the gaps and also we begin beginning to ensure that um, market players that are within the market are compliant and uh, are, are following what is set um, in the laws. I think um, that's uh, how far much I can um, respond to, to the query stroke uh, grievance that's been expressed in the contribution, Dingase. Thank you so much, um, Tomboy. Um, we have Jacqueline, whose hand has been raised for, for quite a while now. Jacqueline, uh, could you please um, um, state your contribution? Sichone, could you help Jacqueline um, with the microphone? You, you can go ahead, Jacqueline. Sorry, my apologies. I might have just pressed by, I might have raised my hand by mistake. My apologies, I'm following. Thank you. Okay. Okay, okay that is um, fine. Yes, uh, over to you, uh, uh, Stanley. Okay, uh, thank you so much everybody for the questions, the interactive session that we've had. Thank you for the responses and the questions that we've received. As we've seen, we've have run out of time. We've way, gone way past our time. So just like to thank our audience for joining us and 
the questions that you've posted in the chat, we will endeavor. I'll ask the presenters to just type your answers there so that the people can see their responses. So we will endeavor to answer all the questions in the chat that have not yet been responded to. But otherwise, for now, we will just thank you for joining us and invite you to join us um, next month again for our usual town hall meeting, which falls on the last Thursday of every month. Ooh. Thank you so much, everybody. Pensions are needed. Hello, my name is Philip Katai Chitalu, Chief Executive Officer of the Securities and Action Commission. Together with my counterparts, Dr. Denny Kariaria, Governor, Bank of Zambia, and Mr. Tresford Chiavula, Acting Registrar, Pensions and Insurance Authority, our institutions have launched a joint campaign to encourage the public to be smart investors. The usage of financial products and services such as savings, investment, insurance are excellent ways of putting your hard-earned money to good use as you stand to benefit any returns in the form of dividends, uh, profits, capital gains, protection of assets. These are some of the benefits that can ultimately improve your financial welfare. However, we are concerned about the rising instances of financial fraud and the resulting financial losses being experienced by citizens. It is for this reason that the Securities and Action Commission, the Bank of Zambia, and the Pension and Insurance Authority have launched a campaign to raise awareness about fraudulent investment schemes. You must be aware that some firms and individuals, locally internationally, offer investments that may be scams. These firms or individuals may provide false details or change their contact details over time. 
the investing public is therefore being advised to be smart and be wary of investment products that may offer above normal or guaranteed returns, such as high interest rates in the short term. We strongly recommend that you only deal with products and services that are provided by firms regulated or authorized by the Security and Exchange Commission, the Bank of Zambia, or the Pension and Insurance Authority. Remember, if an investment product offers you above normal returns and appears to be too good to be true, such as a product that guarantees you a return of 5,000 kwacha after you have invested 100 kwacha for two weeks, such a product may be too risky and may lose you money. Be a smart investor to live a better life. This message was brought to you by the Securities and Exchange Commission, Bank of Zambia, and the Pensions and Insurance Authority.